it is to be high in Christ, what it is to be high on the Lord, what it is to be high in his word, because he'll take us to higher heights. He'll take us to deeper depths in him if we'll only allow him to do what he wants to do. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We have God's promises and all the promises in the book are yea, yea, and amen to us. God is not withholding any good thing from us. I'm glad that he's not withholding. I'm glad that he doesn't have respect to a person. All we got to do is just believe him and take him at his word. You are buried with the Lord in baptism. That's why it's so important to be a baptized believer. Amen. Wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him. And when Jesus was raised up, if you identify with his death, burial, and resurrection, you are raised up too. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. Paul states it this way, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Resurrection life is thus lived by faith in Christ. See, you, see, you can't do it in and of yourself. No, 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 you can't. But wonderful thing about God is this. Everything he asks you to do, he'll get right in the yoke with you. He'll get right there with you, and he'll help you to carry out what he's asked you to do. Isn't, isn't that all right? See, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you even until the ends of the world. You're never alone. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. Another vital sign is the fact that Christ now lives through me. My actions display his will rather than my own. It's no more I, but it's the Christ that lives in me. Resurrection life focuses on things above. In Colossians 3 and 1, it says this. It says this in the present imperative, strongly implying constant seeking. And I don't think there's a one person in here who knows Jesus Christ isn't constantly striving and seeking to be more like him. Am I, am I talking to the right people this morning? We must constantly put God's kingdom first. One practical application of this principle would be to invest our resources in propagating the gospel rather than spending all of our time and money improving on earthly living. We need to put Jesus, the Bible puts it this way, first seek ye the kingdom of God and all of this righteousness and all the other things that we, don't you know God knows what we need? Amen. He knows you need food, clothing, and shelter. Amen. He knows you need money. Yeah. He knows that you need to be secure in your finances. He knows that. But first, seek him. When you put him first, Amen. he'll cause all other things to come flowing. To you. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm glad for that today. See, I don't have to worry. I don't have to fret because my God is able to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Matthew 6, 19, 20 says it. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth where moth and rust dust corrupt. And where the thieves break through and steal. Listen, sometimes when you get a whole lot of stuff, there's folks that mark you out to steal and take your stuff. And they feel they have the right to take your stuff because you've got so much. But God is saying to us today, don't put your heart in these treasures on the earth where the moth and where the rust and where the thief is going to come in and take it. Put your investment in heavenly things. Set your mind on things above, not on things beneath. Set your affection. Am I, am I talking to the right people this morning? But lay up for yourself treasures where neither the moth, must, moth nor the rust doth corrupt, 
and where the thieves can't break through. Listen, when God gives you something, you know what? The devil can't take it away. He can't take it away. Because Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Secondly, Paul tells us, keep our hearts and our affections on things above, found in Colossians 3 or 2. Set your affection is the present imperative, implying continuity. The lust of the flesh is striving constantly for the affections of our hearts. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life, always trying to crowd in and take and rob us of what God wants us to have. Next, we must mortify the flesh, which means we need to put to death fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affections, evil conspicuance, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Put to death. It's up to us to put it to death. Y'all hear me today? It's up to us to use our minds to give God glory. Whatever you think on the most, that's what you become. Scripture tells us, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is. 